and create truly liquid markets. Because the point which you raise, and I think few people are, are aware of that, in the traditional markets, which like foreign exchange has a daily transaction volume of something like two, a four to five trillion dollars per day, on the 10th of May 2010, starting in the, in the equities markets, the sell-off was 10% within 30 minutes. And the reason was very simple, is the matching engine, and I'm slightly technical in the, in the traditional markets, is very simple. You will have a limit order which you put in, and the time which you put in limit orders. And the big problem is that the big players, pension funds, occasionally have to sell large amounts, and they put in a big limit order. And the high frequency traders jump in and put in an order just slightly in front to ride the thing that when the big order is sold, boom, they can ride, ride that. But now they bought it wrong, and they had to bail out in the moment, at the wrong moment, crashing the whole market, destroying $1 trillion of, of wealth. Now, in this new environment, we have to create exchanges with matching engines, which do not have that deficiency, that have more subtle rules in how you do the queuing system. But this is a really important task, and as long as our industry has fake trading things, you know, we cannot take on this challenge. I, I think it's very interesting that you're really bringing up a new methodology, how we can resolve these things. And I would just want to actually refer to something that I read on Twitter yesterday that you stated, that the future of the asset management industry is liquidity provision. Can you kind of expand maybe to the top uh, public to say what you meant? Yes. So it's a slightly technical. I mean, all of us who have traditional bank accounts, traditional investment products, I mean, we're all frustrated at you get very low returns. And the reason why the returns are low is because your asset manager says, let's think what is the big trend, does it go up, so do we buy, and then if the markets all go up, you earn a little bit of money. Wouldn't it be much more efficient to use your assets, not to bet on the big trends, but when you, for example, want to sell, you come in and buy a bit. And then when the next guy comes in and wants to buy, you sell to him. So the future of asset management is to provide liquidity. And that will be a game changer in the asset management industry and has huge potential. So there are a few companies, such as yours, which are developing investment strategies to provide liquidity. And that's a key answer to the problems which we have to solve. Okay. Thank you very much for expanding on that. And I would really like to get your thoughts around uh, the blockchain ecosystem. Kind of, if you think about it, on the bottom we have the infrastructure of the blockchain. Then we have a tokenization process. We have a custodian. We have a banking partner. We have an exchange. And is the missing piece actually to enable the whole blockchain system liquidity? Is it that important, or are we actually seeing things in an inverted way? What is your thoughts about that? Uh, so you mean like a, um, whether we need um, another part to? excite the liquidity. Um, so for, for example, such as like, a, as I know, some uh, mar marketing maker, such as Autonomy and Token Mania, um, those are uh, kind of a secondary marketing. So from my side, I think yes, uh, definitely. Um, as we know, like uh, for last year, especially the beginning of last year, it is bull market. And that time, a lot of the expert high just claims that the blockchain industry is with a big bubble, right? So I think like some extra liquidity is also like the bubble for our industry for the exchange. And as we know, the exchange is the kind of a portal for people to engage in this industry with a lot of projects. So how do we think about this uh, bubble? Um, yeah, so still come back to that example I've just mentioned. So what this bubble uh, brings to the blockchain industry? I think more money and more human resource, right? So we cannot just think that bubble is bad. So the same, the bubble to, I mean this kind of a bubble uh, volume or this bubble liquidity to the exchange, actually it makes us think more energetic and more active and the more people they're gonna feel more willing to get in and uh, for example just uh, buying some bitcoins so i don't think it is 
uh, totally bad thing, and uh, it is necessary to have the liquidity uh, provider. It's very interesting that you state that bubble is actually good because it draws attention to new ideas and new models. And one actually proposal was why not actually to create a market maker fully decentralized on Ethereum network, for instance. So this is kind of the bank that went in that direction. So today market making is done proprietary, you know, these secretive teams. Do you see the future of market making fully decentralized? That it actually it's an algorithm on Ethereum network and I just apply the capital. Is this too far out or is this something realistic we might see in a couple of years? Um, I think this is very interesting question or topic we can talk about, like from, so I just uh, firstly uh, say something from my opinion. Um, I think it uh, could be cent uh, decentralized, so the liquidity provider, and uh, the reason is that, uh, yeah, as you said, it's kind of privacy, because as I know, uh, those of the liquidity maker, they always sign the DNA with the project or the exchange. So it seems like they need the privacy. Mm -hmm. And uh, I believe that in the future, or like uh, even now, there is a technology that could help do the kind of a liquidity maker. However, we still maybe need to concern about the kind of a transaction speed per second, like something like that. Because, you know, still for some decentralized exchange, I know that their machine engine is still like uh, centralized. So I think that could be a problem.